All right, guys, here we go. We're in uh, section 5.3, uh, square root functions. Uh, you can kind of look at examples one and two, but if you look up square root functions on the internet, you'll find a lot of information. So square root functions are y equals x squared, and they look like this. Let me do that in a different color for you guys. So they always start at zero and zero, and they look something like that, okay? So some people ask, and I'll just show you real quick, why does it just, why is it only half? Because if we look at y squared equals x, that is, that is just the idea of a sideways parabola. So you know how a parabola is y equals x squared, right? So a parabola is something like that. Well, y squared equals x is just a parabola on its side. But to be a function, f of x, to be a function, it can't have a top and a bottom like this. It only can have one side. So how do we get half of it? We turn it, because remember a function is y equals something. So we take the square root of both sides and we get y equals the square root of x. Well, when we do that, we eliminate this half and that's where, that's where this comes from. So it's kind of the inverse of, it's the inverse of y equals x squared, because look what we did. We switched x and y, basically, okay? So that's where it comes from. So what you really need to worry about is the fact that it's shaped like this and it always starts at zero and zero, because our friends, h and k come back. Whoops. Oops, h and k come back. So don't forget the starting point or the vertex. We don't call them vertex on this one. Starting point is h and k. So we'll be able to move that, that piece here. And if a is positive, if a is negative, it flips over the x-axis. Okay, so these are the two main things we really need to know right here. Okay, so let's tackle this here. Let's, let's throw an equation up here. Let's uh, call it f of x equals, let's just do a straightforward one, uh, x minus three minus two. Okay, x minus three minus two. Y equal, f of x equals x minus three minus two. So we've got a couple of different things we can do. We can build the graph first. You can put it into Desmos and look at it. You can do the algebra first, and these are usually finding the x-intercepts. And then uh, numerical is checking solutions usually, right now, so we're gonna check solutions. And words is just kind of what are we given? So I'll start with what we're given, and then we'll work from there. So I'm gonna go with what we're given. What we're given is this. We're given H and K. So we know k is equal to negative two, don't forget that's negative two, and h is equal to x minus three equals zero. So we've got to do x minus three equals zero, x equals three, so my, k, my h is three, okay? So my starting point is equal to three and negative two. So I can take this now and I can graph it. So if I go over to graph, I know my starting point is at three, one, two, three, and negative two. And it's gonna go up this way, because that's the shape of the graph. It's gonna go up and kind of curve. So now I can just find an x-intercept, because I know I've gotta have an x-intercept. Well, how do I find an x-intercept? You take the function and you set it equal to zero. So we get the square root of x minus three minus two equals zero. We're going to move this. Oops, sorry guys. Get some different colors. We're going to uh, Add two to both sides. 
So we're going to get x minus 3 equals 2. How do I get rid of the square root? I have to square both sides. So I'm going to square here. I'm going to square there. Well, when I square the left side, I'm left with x minus 3. Okay? And then if I square this side, I'm left with 4. So now I can just get rid of these parentheses. I don't know why I put them there. So now if I add, four, add 3 to both sides, I get x equals 7. So x equals 7. So that means my x-intercept, because that's what we were finding, is x equals 7. So I go over to 7, 1, 2, 3, that's 6, 7. My x-intercept's right there, and I know my curve does something like that, which is shaped just like that. So then we know that this is at 3 and negative 2, and this is at 7 and 0, and I've graphed my equation. So now I gotta check the solution. So I'm gonna take seven, and I'm gonna plug it back into here. So we're gonna, we're gonna do f of seven, which is the square root of seven minus three minus two. f of seven equals square root of four minus two f of 7 equals 2 minus 2, which is 0. 0. Did it equal 0? Yes. 0 equals 0. I'm good. So it is a solution. So that's kind of how we're going to tackle these square root problems here. Okay? We're going to tackle the square root problems. Remember, we have h and k. We set x minus 3 inside the square root equal to 0. To find our h, k is the same thing on the outside. We get our starting point, we plot it, we solve for our x-intercepts. We've got those. We check to make sure the x-intercept equals zero, and then we kind of label everything and put it on the graph, and then that's how you tackle it. So let's go ahead and erase this one, because I want to show you one more that kind of messes with you guys. So we're going to erase this here. Erase that, erase this, we can erase that. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and write our f of x equals x plus 2 plus 4. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and kind of tackle this piece and see what it looks like. So I look at this, remember we have x plus a of x minus h plus k. So my k is equal to 4. I take the x plus 2, set it equal to 0, x equals negative 2. So my h is equal to negative 2. So that means my starting point is at negative 2 and 4. So I go over here to my graph down to, and I'll, I'll move it off, I'll offset it a little bit for you guys. Down to one, two, three, four, I'm down here. Oh, is that right? No, other way around, this is negative four, sorry. Negative four, negative four. No, what am I doing? Oh, this should be. To do this problem, sorry guys, change this. This should be a negative four. No. All right, so I'm totally messed up. That's what I wanted. That's right, that's right. I went the wrong way. I'm gonna go negative two and up four. It's over here, man. Negative two and four. All right, guys. So our vertex is negative two and four, negative two and four, I was right. I don't know why my brain went crazy right there. So then we're gonna take this to find the x-intercept, we're gonna take the function, square root of x plus two plus four, 
the plus, but we're going to set that equal to zero. All right, so here we go. Subtract four from both sides. And so we get the square root of x plus two equals negative four. We square both sides. And we get x plus, oops, we get x plus two equals 16. Subtract two from both sides and we get x equals 14. So x equals 14. So that means x equals 14. It's out here, right? Okay, so before I graph this thing, let's check something. So I want to check to make sure this solution is good. So I'm going to take this, my function, I'm going to go f of 14 equals the square root of 14 plus 2 plus 4. Okay? So now if we look at this, we get f of 14 equals square root of 16 plus 4. So f of 14 equals 4 plus 4, which is equal to 8. 8 does not equal 0. So 14... Since uh, 8 does not equal 0, because it has to equal 0 to be an x-intercept. Since 8 does not equal 0, then it's not a solution. Okay? So when we check these answers, we got to make sure we check to make sure that they equal 0 when we're done. So which way, then how do I graph it? Well, the graph goes which way? It goes up to the right like this, unless there's a negative in front of A. Is there a negative in front of A? Is there a negative out here? No. So this graph just goes like this. Well, since that graph goes up, is it ever going to cross the x-axis? No. Even though x equals 14, x equals 14, it doesn't equal 0, so it can't be here. So 14 and 8 is up here. That's where 14 and 8 is. So watch out because these will give you fake solutions. Remember, you have to check your x-intercepts, plug them into the original equation, and they have to equal 0. If they do not equal 0, it's not a solution because this never crosses the x-axis anyways. All right, guys, there's our video on square root functions. Good luck. We'll see you soon.